Thank you, Laurel. In the federal race to the top applications for the K-12 funding, Oregon was recently named seventh from the bottom of 40 state applicants, largely because we have weak plans to ensure highly effective teachers across the state. Adequacy and stability of K-12 funding is a high priority for many Oregonians, but it cannot stand apart from improvements to the system that will deliver greater student achievement. Will you support evidence-based reforms as part of the conversation about school funding? I strongly support both reforming the way our educational system works, and I strongly support adequately funding our current educational system. Because the fact is, we are adequately funding our educational system today. We adopted a, uh, you know, uh, an education model for this state back uh, when John was governor. We adopted an equality education model that the most recent estimate is we're $2.2 billion short of adequate funding for education. So I really believe in some real reforms. Like the, I think the one that I get most excited about is one that the legislature has started to implement, which funds uh, mentors, older teachers, more experienced teachers, I should say, more experienced teachers to work with new teachers to help them really learn the ropes and become effective teachers. And we've seen already incredible results from that kind of an effort. Uh, and I think those kind of reforms are wonderful. And we need to make sure at the same time we're adequately funding our overall education system so that teachers can do their job. Thank you, Secretary Bradbury. Governor Kitzhaber. I think we need to employ evidence-based uh, uh, education, medicine, best practices throughout the, 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 the spectrum. Uh, I also agree with Bill that our educational enterprise is underfunded at all levels. But I think part of the strategy to get it recapitalized is to take a look at the operational model we've got. And we've got an utterly fragmented budgetary process that treats K-12, uh, community colleges, higher ed, and early childhood as completely separate entities. Uh, we fund based on enrollment, uh, not even uh, attendance, uh, and I'm proposing a, a single transparent uh, educational budget where funding is based on, uh, not, instead of funding uh, enrollment based on institutions, funding students based on performance. And when I talk about performance, I'm talking about the state needs the capacity to look around the system and see where schools are struggling, where districts are struggling, and provide and make them help make the diagnosis. Is that because there are eight different languages being spoken there? Is it because half the kids are learning English for the first time? And bring the resources in to lift the system up to target the, 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 the areas where we're having difficulties. That requires a much more transparent budget process. It also requires uh, more accountability at the district level for, for outcomes, which means we have to have some fair, uh, 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 transparent, uh, formative, way of assessing both student and teacher performance based on a growth model. Uh, and to me that is a very, very, it's a very, very key element for making an educational system that actually works. Uh, we have the capacity to do that. Uh, I plan to bring in a budget that does that. And I'm very, very excited about what that can do to energize our system of public education and make that strong case that we need to reinvest in the whole enterprise of education for what we can help with people sector. Thank you, Governor. And now, Bob DeConing from Oregon Entrepreneurs Network, your question for the governor. Thanks, Laurel. Fortunately, Oregon has a good concentration of energetic, well-educated young adults, many of whom have the drive to start new businesses. However, the availability of capital, particularly amongst the required for seed ground and early stage businesses, appears quite limited. As governor, what specific steps would you or your administration take to expand the availability of capital so these would be entrepreneurs? Well, that's a really good question, and I don't have a silver bullet. I think that the, the challenge, is that there, there's a number of factors that contribute to the challenge. One of them, of course, is that we've got a community banking crisis, uh, and uh, uh, community bank holding big portfolios of devalued real estate uh, 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 holdings and higher federal reserve asset requirements, so they can't even make the loans that they want to. Uh, I think we need to look at a number of things. I think we do need to look at the overall tax code to see whether there are ways the tax code can could, could be used to uh, incent uh, the, uh, the, the, the availability of early stage capitalization of these, of these companies. I do think we need to revisit the issue of uh, investing some of the state pension funds in some kind of a public uh, uh, 
vehicle to uh, seen some of these early uh, capital needs. The, uh, uh, obviously, there are, that issue has been around before. There's fiduciary responsibilities that we have to manage with the retirement fund. But I've had conversations along those lines with uh, members of the public employee agencies who think that there are some more creative ways we can use those resources. And I think this might be one of them. Thank you, Governor. And Secretary Battery, what are your thoughts? I think it's really critical uh, that this state uh, be in a position where it's encouraging uh, and assisting entrepreneurs. First step uh, is one that I uh, created when I was a legislator, which was small business development centers at the community colleges that really can provide some important business answers to entrepreneurs who are not really sure how to move forward in business. So that's number one. Number two, you've got to make sure that the climate is good for business. You've got to make sure that you're not charging business a whole lot of money in terms of fees. We lowered fees in the Secretary of State's office for business registry. And then number three, I think a critical part of this whole equation is to really provide access to capital, uh, for, particularly for small and medium-sized businesses, but also for entrepreneurs. And you can do that through the creation of the Bank of Oregon. And basically what the Bank of Oregon does is recognize that we all pay a whole lot of taxes in this state that, and fees that go into a central place called the state treasury, and you can create a bank out of that, and the Bank of Oregon can partner with local community banks to provide the capital needed for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Thank you, Secretary Bradbury. And next up, we have Judy Papler from the Portland Business Alliance. What's your question for Secretary Bradbury? So as you know, Oregon is uh, the ninth most trade-dependent economy in the United States and a gateway to global markets. Um, maybe you could talk about what your plans would be to uh, expand the state's international trade relationships and grow the state's trade sector. That's a great question. And I think uh, I have traditionally been a very strong supporter of international trade and the role the state plays in really figuring out those markets and making sure that Oregon products are represented well in international trade shows and the like. And I've had the opportunity uh, to travel uh, to the Skiji fish market in Tokyo. I've had the opportunity to go to Korea. I've you know, really gone and done some trade missions with the Economic Development Department. So I think one of the things you need to understand, that we need to understand as governors, as a governor, you need to understand the important role that the International Trade Division of the Economic Development Department can play. And you need to make sure that you put time into traveling with the International Trade Division because it's very clear that a governor actually has a significant impact uh, on uh, foreign countries and foreign companies uh, if the governor comes and makes an appearance and really talks with them. So I think that would be one of the key roles you'd have, is to really be representing of the state of Oregon as the state of Oregon's chief executive. Thank you, Secretary Bradbury. Governor Kitzhaber. Well, a couple of things. I, I don't think there's any substitute for the governor himself or herself actually showing up uh, in, in, in our trip with our trading partners. I make numerous uh, trips to uh, aid, particularly to aid, but also to Europe during the governorship. And I think that's very, very important. The governor has to be the chief cheerleader uh, and develop those personal relationships. We had uh, something called the Oregon Goodwill Ambassadors uh, with, uh, with Japan, with the head of Sony, uh, the Japanese Chamber of Commerce, six very prominent Japanese individuals who represented the boosted Oregon over in, in, in Japan. Second, second uh, uh, travel uh, uh, transportation is obviously very, very key. We used to have uh, air connections to three countries in Asia. I was involved with bringing KDL 747 cargo uh, flights into the year and also the initial uh, negotiations they brought uh, with Hansen. So having those connections, both passenger and, and, uh, and, and freight, are also extraordinarily important. And I think we can't forget the importance of, of a freight movement here in the state of Oregon. The Port of Portland is our window to international trade and commerce. It's important to people in Klamath Falls. It's important to people throughout the state and the region. That's where the importance of doing something about the Columbia River crossing comes in, the larger picture of, of actually improving Oregon's position in the international market. So I would say showing up, being a cheerleader, developing the long-term relationships, and making sure that we can move goods uh, efficiently to, to our port. And I would also add very, very briefly, Oregon has the opportunity for a new trade and sector business in, uh, 
uh, knowledge and, and knowledge-based exports uh, based on our, our uh, leadership, green architecture, uh, and, uh, and sustainability environmental services.